Let's light this firecracker. 60, 59, 58. This is a countdown 57, to the Slade and Mason show. 55, 54. This continues to be a countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 50, 49, 48. You're listening to the countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 45, Mountain 44, Road. 43. This is the continued 42, countdown to the Slade and Mason 40, show. 39. 38 right now 37 you're listening 36, to the countdown 35 the and 34 show. 33 please stand 32, by me as you are listening to the countdown 30, to the Slade 29 and Mason show 28 27 this 26, is of course the 25 <laughs> the Slade and Mason show 23 22 we continue now with the countdown 20, to the Slade 19, and Mason show 18 17 stand by 16 as we are so now the countdown 14, to the Slade 13, and Mason show 12 11. Yes. 10. This is yes. our count. 9. <laughs> to the Slade and Mason <laughs> Seven. show. Couldn't be anything Six. else. 5. Ready? 4. Here we go. 3. Here comes the two, music. <clears throat> 1. Now broadcasting from the Dan Mason Studios. Yep, yep. Deep. Yep. In the heart of Virginia, it's the Slade and Mason Show. (laughs) Music stopped. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And, and this, this is the Slade and Mason, Mason Show. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Dan Mason, and J.D. will be here next week. Yay! Well, uh, we won't have to listen to Dan Mason the whole time. Yeah! <clears throat> Stop it. That wasn't nice. That was not nice. Stop it. All right. So anyway, I am Dan Mason. J.D. will be here next week. That's what he's promising everybody. So hopefully I won't have to do this alone again. Alone again, I'm again, I'm alone again, I'm on the road again. Oh, speaking of the road. So, um, so, uh, so how do I do this? So <laughs> I've said so like nine times already. All right, let's do this real quick. Let's get the disclaimer out of the way. The Slade and Mason show is all about you and us. This is our disclaimer. It is. It's like a radio pro. Well, JD would argue that point, but it's it's like this program, you know, where news stories are shared with you and things that are discovered throughout the week, and it's really just our take on it, because we're basically saying the same thing you're thinking inside your head. You're looking, reading that article, and going, "What?" So we're 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 saying that, "What?" Just for you, uh, but you probably never hear this on the radio. At least not our take on it. Uh, we're just having fun. Don't take it too seriously. Just enjoy. Now, all the music you're listening to is brought to you by Dano Music. Dano Music, because uh, we love him. Uh, there'll be a link on the webpage slash wherever you're listening to this. On Hey, what is your favorite podcaster? Tell us. Tell us. Reach out to us. There's a way to reach out to us. You know how to do it. Um, <clears throat> we're at OLFW.com. We have that Instagram page that I haven't looked at since, like, 2016 um but please by all means reach out to us tell us what you think of the show one way or the other whether you like it you hate it and if you like it please by all means tell your friends cops neighborhood friends you see people in the street pumping gas just look over and go hey you know what i listen to the slade mason show as they hop in the car and drive away as fast as they can it's all good now uh if you don't like the show please Tell your friends, tell your neighborhood, tell your cop friends, tell the guy across the way you're listening to and you're, you're pumping your gas and go, hey, I listen to the Slade Mason show and I hate it. Man, you keep listening to it week after week after week. And we appreciate that. So um, at OLFW when it works, dot com, you can get a link there in the upper right hand corner for merchandise. You can order there's uh, hoodies. Hey, it's hoodie season, baby. I was outside. It was 58 degrees. 58 degrees. I'm loving it. Loving it. Um, so don't forget to do that. You can uh, order that in time for Christmas. Da, 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 dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Christmas is out already. We'll, eh, maybe we'll talk about that. But 
Um, so that's what's going on. So my rant is more of a uh, a shared observation for the morning. Uh, I know I'm kind of taking over JD's rant a little bit here, but I don't want to do that because that that's his job. He should get here right now and do it. All right, JD, go ahead. Do your do your morning rant. Go ahead. <sighs> Nothing. All right. So it's it's just gonna be. It's not a rant. It's a hey. Guess what happened to me? <laughs> Oh, my goodness gracious. So a couple of things. Uh, This past week, my daughter got her driver's license. So I no longer need to be a passenger. She can drive on her own, which is awesome. She went to go visit friends yesterday, which was great. Now, the vehicle that she chose is my 1994 Toyota Tercel with, I don't know, 140,000 miles on it, we'll say. And so (laughs) we drove, so it was myself, my son, and her drove to Richmond because you have to get an appointment for the driving test. Mm -hmm. So we did that. I'll just say, I think the, I think the, uh, the, 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 the car gods were watching over us that day because we did we drove an hour down to richmond uh she went through the driving test she passed very cool first time out no issues and we drove all the way back up no issues perfect lovely uh yesterday afternoon i decided i was going to go get another barrel for my ale making kit which means a barrel, a spigot, and a little hop, the little nerbulator at the top that lets CO2 out but doesn't let bad stuff in. Okay. So went up north. North, eh, it's like a 25-mile ride up to my local beer uh, establishment who serves beverages, actually serves pretty good ales and beers and things like that, but they also have supplies. So I went and I picked up my barrel. Got back on 95 and was chatting away with a friend of mine. And all of a sudden, the air conditioning stopped. And the car just, uh, you can feel it moving, but it's like, "Mm, something's not happening right here. So I pulled over to the side of the road, tried to get it started again, put it in neutral, tried to get it started. Nothing. It just, just like in the cartoons, didn't work. So sat there. Um, I was about 10, 12, I was 12 miles away from home and that's, that's the bummer. So I wasn't, wasn't that far away. So I called the tow truck service and I said, all right. Because at first I called my brother. He has like a little, uh, tow dolly thing. It's better if you can drive the car onto the tow dolly because there's like a six inch lip you get it. Anyway, so called the tow truck place and I said, here's where I'm at. Yeah, here's what I got. Yeah, that'll be a hundred dollars. I went, what? Dude, 12, 12 miles, a hundred dollars. Yep. Nope. Bye. He went by. So. Brother showed up about uh, 45 minutes later. We threw uh, a very interesting combination of uh, 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 in a, a, a on the spot come along made. We ratcheted the vehicle up over that six inch lip that I was talking about. We did not get hit by vehicles on 95. Came really close though. Let me tell you, people are you know, and this this is a little bit of, so. Look, all right, right now, I'm not seeing a whole lot of police officers on the road. Cops, I'll call them cops. So I think people are starting to take a little more advantage of that. And that is really, really dangerous. Uh, These muscle cars that you guys are buying, the Mustangs, the uh, GM vehicles, the uh, 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 Chryslers, the big vehicles, Look, just because you have 700 horsepower under the hood doesn't mean you have to use all 700 horsepower. I saw one guy, it looked like all the other cars were standing still 
and he was zipping along at about 70 miles an hour on top of the standstill. But all those other cars are going like 70 miles an hour anyway. I'm just saying, you know, I'm on the side of the road. <laughs> it's very scary. Please, slow down. Oh, you know the other thing I did? You'll be so proud of me. Uh, I opened up my Google Maps, and I, while I was stuck on the side of the road, and I plotted directions to get home, which I know I'm not going anywhere, but when it popped up and gave me the directions, I immediately hit the little plus sign and said, you know, disabled vehicle, so that people kind of knew I was here, and yes, I did put a road flare out, yep, 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 but nope, nope, they didn't slow down at all, so I don't know what that's all about. Um, so we will be doing <clears throat> the Slade and Mason show today. I am getting off on tangent here. All right. What am I going to do? Oh yeah. Don't forget. We are brought to you by Icy something. Icy treats. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so, but I want to get into our stories here. Things I'm hearing in the news and, um, let's see. <clears throat> this is, this is, I guess this will be interesting because <clears throat> I can't breathe. Hold on. <laughs> ah, hold on. All right. Here we go. Microsoft is releasing a deep fake detector tool. And this is being done for looking, I guess, for any subtle changes to the context of the video, which just that, I mean, there are, when you, when you do a video, there are, uh, how does one put this? There are biometric features built into every human being and in essence your face can like pulsate and undulate and and it has like a a pattern to it so when you throw on top of a pattern another person's pattern you may see the one pattern on the edge and then you see this fake pattern on top that may be what they're they're looking into so i guess this is going to be the <clears throat> they've it's going to be integrated, if I'm reading this correctly, if it's going to be integrated within Facebook, I'm not sure. Uh, that was the other thing I heard was uh, Facebook is going to drop, I guess, two weeks or a week before the election. No video, no uh, no campaigning. So that'll be good here. Um, so it was interesting. It's an interesting little read here. It's a very long read. Uh, but, you know, at least, you know, we're we're trying to address the problem. Because I've seen some videos. There's a really cool one of, and you can Google this one. It's, as you know, there was a famous, there was a speech put together by Richard Nixon. And the speech was put together just in case the Apollo mission went south and everybody crash landed into the moon. Because <clears throat> they didn't know anybody was going to land on the moon and come back home. Blah, blah, blah. So he had a speech produced and someone went through, I think it was MIT, MIT went through the trouble of, making it seem like it was a real news story coming on. They had cameramen walking about. You see Richard Nixon sitting at a, at a desk waiting. There's, you know, makeup is coming by and what have you. And then he goes live. And it was a deep fake. And it was him uh, producing, giving out, in his own voice as well. That was the other creepy thing. It was him giving out um, the speech about, you know, uh, the fact that we crashed on the moon. But it never happened. So deep fakes are getting pretty strong. Um, one day I'll be replaced by a deep fake. Who knows? It'll be very interesting. We'll go that here and then. Uh, this is this is interesting. Uh, so this next story, I gotta I gotta share this with you. It's a little bit behind the scenes here. I personally, just for fun and giggles, became a door dasher. Yeah, you know those guys that go around and they have those bags and they. Go and pick up your stuff and deliver it to you. And I figured, what the hey, it's fun to do. You're driving around, get to meet cool people, get to see cool things. And that's what I did. I did it for about three weeks. I'm I think I'm done for right now. But we'll see. Now, the the one thing I did notice is if I'm going from, say, Massaponics to um South Stafford, just proper, I don't get any orders on my phone. At all, because I'm in transit. It doesn't look like I'm close enough to the restaurant. And that's the deal. The close enough to the restaurant part. People 
you when you're a DoorDasher, and I'm sure this is the same with the other, you know, Grubhubs and what have you. When you're when you're in close proximity, that's when you're going to get the order. The Amazon drivers have figured out the exact same thing. You know, there are Amazon drivers, and their primary job is they just sit and they wait for an order, and they get a little pop up on their phone, and they go pick up. You know, they go to Whole Foods, pick up a delivery, and drop it off at someone's house. The difficulty is that you, let's say, for instance, if you are at Whole Foods, some of these places are in um, city situations where they can't, you can't park, you know, just outside the door unless you're like, you know, picking up and dropping off. So what they've done is they're like hanging their phones in trees just outside of, you know, the food store that way they the the system says oh his phone is only three feet away this other guy's phone is three feet six inches away we'll give it to this guy who's three feet away and the drivers are some of them are like yeah this is cool and others like no this bites because uh, what what if i i just i just want to get my somebody, whatever. so all these guys are getting these orders sooner than everybody else they're getting their first crack at it you know, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's pretty clever. Some people are clever that way, but they, they got to figure a better way to do this because maybe they could just do like round robin. Like, hey, here's a group of 15 people. They're in the area. Spin the dice. <laughs> Bing. Number 16 gets it. I know there was 15 people. It just says 16. So there you go. That'll be fine. That'll work out. I solved the problem. There you go. Thank you. Amazon, that'll be uh, $15,000 for the patent application. Thank you. Time for a sip of coffee. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Um, didn't get a chance to really deeply neat read into this one, but this is, uh, uh, it's a, I, I you know, I, I love all this stuff here. So as you know, we live in, a, in the Milky Way. And evidently, they have done some uh, calculations this is the University of Manchester. So it's like a real place. is isn't some guy in the back, you know, hanging out, running numbers in his backyard going, yeah, man, like, if you look up at the sky. Yeah, it's not like that. They have published a uh, research paper in the monthly notices of the Royal Ast uh, Astronomical Society. And this is a new milestone for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence study. And evidently... They are coming up with the fact that uh, instead of 1,400 stars having the possible likelihood of a living, existing, viable, up and running, technologically advanced society, now mind you, that's the whole Milky Way, up to 280,000 possible star locations where, you know, you, we can, we can pick them up. And so I, if you've been listening to news, like I knew, do the way, the same way I do, there are stories about radio waves coming in at a set pattern. Now they're thinking it might be like a slow moving, you know, quasar or something like that. That's kicking it out. Hey, <laughs> it could be like Fox news. Who knows? Uh, so anyway, I will leave a, a link for that and for those who people who just can't uh just can't wait there's a video in there for you to watch you could watch the video learn a little bit more about that um i just thought it was interesting because it, it's almost as if we're 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 presenting it and getting it closer and closer i gosh i remember I, there was a playbook i want to get this right uh drafted in the 40s i do believe it was and it was a plan to uh, like desensitize everybody on the planet to the idea that, yeah, there are other, you know, entities outside this little tiny blue dot. Okay. And that, you know, you, you start to chip away at it and it even included uh, Hollywood, you know, uh, you know, kind of supporting, you know, uh, movies or, uh, TV or radio programs and television programs to kind of soft sell the idea that, yeah, you know, maybe there's stuff out there. So when they land, don't freak out. Okay. 
Um, and that's the first thing we need to do. If they, if they, if they land, first thing to do is not pull out an AK-47 and start, you know, trying to blast holes. Okay. Because it'll probably, the material on the outside will probably be tougher than a Tesla truck. So it's going to bounce and probably hit you in the face. So that one may be a really good idea. Remember, if they're coming from like a nearby star, <laughs> your little bullet is not going to do squat. So anyway, I'll leave that link in the description. I thought it was kind of cute. Um, <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, Elon Musk says, I got some good news and I got some bad news. So the good news is there he's going to have a fleet of a thousand starships in like three weeks or something. I forget what it is. Um, so these starships will actually be able to get you and your sorry ass from Earth all the way to Mars. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day um, until you get to Mars, where he said, and I quote, uh, warns that the first visitors will probably die. Remember, there is, uh, there's no discernible, I mean, there is, but it's pretty weak and lame, uh, pretty lousy atmosphere. Uh, there is a material on the, um, on the moon that is deadly poisonous to humans, as is Mars, uh, moon, excuse me. Um, let's see, you, uh, <laughs> uh, radiation. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mars no longer has a magnetic field. Therefore, uh, it doesn't have beautiful aurora borealis, is, 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 which uh, kick off the uh, those nasty little rays coming off from the sun. So that goes right straight to the planet. Nice, nice and cookie. And you will probably die, you know, as soon as you get there. But we're going to get you. You'll be one of the first people to go there and die. So there you go. That would be a nice little treat for everybody. Don't you agree? Does everybody feel good about that little treat there? Yeah, that would be nice. Yep. So head on over. Uh, oh, and then you probably got to pay Elon Musk a couple million dollars to do this because I, he's probably not going to allow this for free. I'm I'm just guessing. He never mentioned how that's going to work out. But hey, if you're if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, man, these ads, these ads I'm seeing on Facebook and these these television uh, the radio programs and these ads I'm hearing and and the you know YouTube and I feel like I'm being guided like a like a like a like a sheep to slaughter. Yep, you are. So here's the deal: there is a guidebook from the CIA. This was used um, in Brazil, I want to say it is, back in the late 40s, early 50s. I don't get my numbers wrong here. I read the article. I'll leave it for you guys. But uh, long story short, you um, you start with a fear. Oh, oh, oh. It was based upon um, War of the Worlds. Remember, um, uh, 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 G. Wells, or H.G. Wells. Thank you. Thank you, Freddie. Appreciate it. H.G. Wells story, and the um, there was the radio program, and people were starting to freak out, and people were you know like running out of town and thought their town was being taken over by aliens, and it was a radio program, and it, they kept saying, "Hey, this is a radio program. This is a radio program. It's just it's just fun, you know. Halloween, enjoy yourself." People took it as being the real thing because it came out over the speakers. So, and imagine how creepy that'd be if you guy got a guy doing like a newscast. You didn't catch the first two minutes, which said, hey, by the way, this is just, you know, a story. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what they're, what they're saying is they use that as a, a primer and they learned from it. And they wanted to get the, I guess, the president of Brazil, and again, I forget the right one, out of office. So what they did was they went ahead and started these series of radio programs. And they were done by a couple of uh, uh, DJ jocks in Florida. And it was done like, you know, five years earlier. But it, it got progressively more aggressive, more aggressive, more aggressive. Oh, my gosh, you're coming down the road. You better. And the, you know, like warnings like, hey, don't support your president, because if you do, someone's going to come out and shoot you. And, and people were panicking. They hit the streets and they finally said, hey, President so-and-so, you got to get out of here. And, you know, because they were talking about the, the rebels were right at their door and they're coming down through the, through the jungle and, and they plotted exactly where they were supposed to be. So 
Yeah. So we have a awesome responsibility when we share things uh, to the public. You know, when when I share stuff with you, I'm sending you the links because I just figured, you know, I'll let you read it. I'll let you figure out what I'm I'm reading and whether or not my brain is completely twisted off, which is probably probably the case. But um, oh, let me get rid of this one. I don't like this story. Let's get that one out of here only because it's too negative. But hey, did you know? Did you know this is really going to freak you out? The lemonade inside the facility, inside of Chick-fil-A, has sugar in it. I know. I know. It's going to come as a shock to a lot of you. I know. I know. That sweetness does not come from the lemon. Yep. I know. I know. I know. You thought, hey, lemons are sweet. I'll just squeeze them and make lemonade. Mm -hmm. I'll let that sink in for a second. Nope, 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 nope. So a lemon is inherently very tart because it has a lot of vitamin C in it. And you need to counteract that vitamin C because let me tell you, what? Uh, have you ever bit down into a, a lemon for real other than shooting with a shot of tequila? Yeah, it's it's a bit rough. So the dealio is someone... Uh, put a video and showed just how much sugar goes into their lemonade or Chick-fil-A. But guys, I got some news for you. If you go to uh, Burger King, if they have lemonade and McDonald's, if they have lemonade and Wendy's, if they have lemonade and, you know, name, name a place, you're going to have the same amount of, of sugar. So don't be shocked by it. It's for real. It's to counteract the sourness. So you got that nice lemony flavor and a boatload of sugar. Did you really think going to a fast food restaurant, you get something nutritional and something that's good for you? No, that's why you went to a fast food restaurant, you ding dong. Come on, get off it already. Anyway, um, let's see. What do we got here? You know what? We need to do this. We need to take a short break because I've been just rattling off, rattling off for all this time. Let's do this. Let's take a break. And then we'll be right back. Okay. Thank goodness for this break. Sadly, however, we will return to the Slade and Mason show. Today in history, September 6th, 1492, Christopher Columbus sails from the Canary Islands on his way across the Atlantic for the very first time, looking for a better route to India. Instead, he bumps into the whole North America thing. 1847, Henry David Thoreau leaves Walden Pond and, and moves in with Ralph Waldo Emerson and his family in Concord, Massachusetts. And then later they did that movie with uh, Catherine Hepburn and uh, Henry Fonda on, on Walden's Pond. I'm oh, sorry, what, Freddy? Oh, on Golden's Pond. Wasn't that the movie? With, that wasn't the one? Walden's Pond? Never, never mind, never mind. 1949, Allied military authorities relinquished control of former Nazi Germany assets back over to German control. And then a week later, we got Volkswagen Beetles coming out of our ears. And finally, 1995. Cal Ripken Jr. of the Baltimore Orioles plays his 2,131st consecutive game, breaking a record that stood for 56 years. Uh, evidently, uh, no one told him about the accrued uh, vacation policy they had. I'm Dan Mason, and that's September 6th. Who the f has the time to wait for those kids to make a decision of their own, we at Brimley's realize those kids are so annoying, takes them forever to make a decision. I mean, we only got five things. How hard is that to figure out? Pick something and go with it. Well, at Brimley's, we realize you gotta bring those ankle biters with you everywhere you go, those kids so annoying and they gotta eat all the time too so what we did was we decided to streamline our menu 
That's right. We ain't got five things no more. Just three. Make it nice and easy. We got the chicken sandwich. We got the mac and cheese. And we got a soda. It's one f***ing flavor. Cola. It ain't even name brand. Move it. Don't ask us for any f***ing cheeseburger. Don't ask us for any salad. Don't ask for nothing. Just get through the drive-thru. Grab your bag. Everybody gets the same thing. Stop it. And if you want service, well then go over to Pouchies and eat a ground up marsupial for all I care. Because here at Brimley's, we're not here to serve you. We're here to serve you. Come down to Brimley's. Brimley's. Really good food. Damn good food. The new Brimley's lineup available at 15 great locations. Took a taxi cab. We got downtown and he gave me the tab. He made the trip in real good time. I looked at my change and I was short a dime. I asked my gal if she had a dime to spare. She said she thought she might have it somewhere. She opened her pocketbook there in the light, and never in my life have I seen such a sight. She had lipstick, a comb, and a fingernail file, an old pair of earrings gone out of style. A rubber band and a powder puff, a billfold loaded with cards and stuff. She had corn pads, matches, and some kind of token, tickets for a show way up in Shimokin. Thumbtacks, a pencil, a pen, and a nail, a big bunch of letters she forgot to mail. Cuff links, buttons, and a Tony kit, a big ball of yarn she's gonna knit. She had a coin purse, a ponytail, and a chocolate bar. A two-buck ticket on a brand new car. She had a hairnet, beads, and some colored specks. A compact glove and some old blank checks. A fountain pen was leaking a little bit of ink, and even the stopper to the kitchen sink. A faded old flower from a wedding corsage and a couple of keys to her old dad's garage. A charger plate and a metal chain. It looked like the search was all in vain. She had a postcard picture of Grant's tomb and a bottle of that sweet-smelling French perfume. A box of aspirin and an old band-aid. A couple of bills that hadn't been paid. A package of gum and some filter smokes and a book of Joe Miller's favorite jokes. She's my gal and that's no crime, but my gosh, all I wanted was just to die. Sadly, we must now return you to the Slade and Mason Show. <clears throat> Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this, this is the Slade and Mason, Mason Show. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. All right, that was... <laughs> um, I have to be honest with you, that was the first time I've ever heard that song. That's called the Pocket Book Song by Leroy Van Dyke, Smith Terry Hazelwood. I have no idea. I'm giving you the credit to there. Um, that was in commemoration of today being... But I see again, I didn't listen to the whole thing. So it today is National Read a Book Day. And I guess in there she did have a book, so there you go. I guess that kind of counts. That's what that's all about. But uh yeah, that was that was uh that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Nice little uh that that was referred to as country music. Mm-hmm. Country music, boys and girls. Don't forget country music, because apparently it's good for you. All right, this section, this portion, this area, this design, this load of the Slade and Mason Show is brought to you by I See Something I See. What is that, you may say? Well, let me let me <laughs> let me bend your ear a little bit and share with you what's going on here. So I see that I see I see something. So it's I see something. Ready with me? Come on. Ready? Have we got it? Did I, did I spell it right? Good. All right. I see something I see dot com. So I see I see done something. So what, you, you ever wonder why I'm talking? All right. So anyway, this is a <laughs> somebody of mine, Sheila Cannon. It's a shaved ice and treats truck, and they come by, and they'll go to your your birthday party, corporate event, 
any kind of like you may have like a fundraiser or something like that. We've had them where I'm working as well. And she goes down to Ladysmith pretty regularly. There are some spots to go. And it's a it's a wonderful treat on a day like this. And essentially it's it's this beautiful shaved ice to get this big, huge dish. She's pretty generous with her uh, offering here. I got to tell you that much. I've had it before. And all the toppings you could think of, they go on. And you drizzle it on top. And it just makes the uh, the ice cream taste delicious. It tastes like ice cream. It's not really ice cream. It's just ice, but but it's shaved so thin, it's so creamy, it's so delicious. And then kids like it because they can put those little gummy worms on top. And as soon as they hit the ice, they just freeze up, and the kids are crunching on them. And I don't know, maybe you have to see a dentist afterwards. I'm not worried about that. But give them a call at eight zero four six one seven eighty eight twenty seven. That's eight zero four six one seven eighty eight twenty seven. They will hook you up. They will schedule some time for your special event. Um, Sheila uh, will do that for you. 804-617-8827. They are also at www.icsomethingic.com, which is I-C-E-Y-S-O-M-E-T-H-I-N. Leave the G off, for goodness sakes. I-C-E-Y.com. They are available on Facebook, Instagram. You can even email them at Gmail. So... You know, you have no excuse at this point. Give them a call at 804-617-8827. Tell them you heard about her and her business on the Slade and Mason show. And after her bottom jaw drops to the floor, there you go. There you go. You don't be funny. You don't be funny. Come here. Come closer to the microphone. Come here. Listen. Come a little closer. A little closer. It'd be really funny if everybody who was listening to this just called her to say, hey, Dan Mason from the Slade and Mason show said hi. All right, there you go. 804-617-8827, 804-617-8827. Call them before you forget what you are doing. All right, so there are so many other things I want to talk about. Uh, I want to make sure I get this one done La, da, 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 da. It's all the way at the bottom of the list, but how much time do we have left here? Let's see. Oh man, I'm sucking it up fast. Um, I'm gonna move it. Where is it? I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Don't give me a moment. Give me a moment. Talks amongst yourselves. There it is. Let me copy this. I want to make sure I get this very next story. Put the X over here. All right. This is really, 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 really important. That's why I'm making it my next story. <clears throat> the earth is making the moon rust. I mean, it isn't bad enough that, you know, we're putting plastic in the oceans and we're poisoning our water and we're using pesticides like we're going crazy. Nope. We, on top of everything else, are rusting the moon. And then you're saying to yourself, well, Hold, hold the phone. Wait, 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 wait. How can the earth be rusting the moon? That doesn't make any sense. First off, we're over here. It's over there. And, you know, with rust, you need like uh, oxygen or water or something like that. Okay. Well, as it turns out, it's it's kind of a freaky situation, but... Let's see. Um, let me get this right here. So it, it, it's, it has to do with the fact that as we, as the as the Earth passes in front of the Moon and we block the the um, the Sun, it's no longer getting blasted with rays, and it has to do with the Earth's magnetic field and the solar wind. It stretches out like this long magnetic bubble in the direction of the Moon, and the moon enters into uh, this tail, if you will, this that's what they call it, for about three days. And it takes about six days total for it to go from end to end. And during this time, the moon's surface, it, the tail covers the entire surface of the moon. And weird things happen, like dust particles in the moon start to float off the ground. And they get into this little tiny dust storm. And we're not talking much. We're not talking much. And the oxygen is from, it comes from the earth. So it gets torn off a little bit, gets pushed out. Kind of like when the sun 
kicks off its rays and it finally hits us here on Earth. Same thing. We're pushing off rays from the Earth, bits of oxygen, and it lands on the moon and it's actually rusting it. Really, guys, I, I, I can't make this stuff up. But I'm going to leave a link in the description because that's kind of interesting. They, they were trying to figure this out. They were like, wait, why are we getting rust on the moon? Because they had a, um, the, uh, 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 the Indian probe back in 2008, and it figured out there were like, first off, there's a lot of water on the moon. So there's that. And, of course, with the, you know, deionizing. And so it, it does happen. It does happen. I mean, uh, I just thought it was an interesting story. I'm going to put it up there. No no hate emails. Just, just back off, man. I thought it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I just want to talk about it. Um, do I want to talk about this one? Um, so, yeah, let's talk about her. Let's go there. There is a woman. Her name is, and if you're, you're hip to this kind of stuff, you'll know that this was, this is interesting. Her name is Jessica A. Krung, K-R-U-G. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And she is a professor of African and Latin American studies and has been there for a good number of years. Where has she been? She was, uh, where is she? She was at George Washington University. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she has been claiming herself as having a black and Latina heritage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, she just announced Thursday that uh, she is she is white. So I, I don't know. I don't know. When, first off, why do you, where do you, you know, with so much stuff going on in the world, where do, I don't know where to begin with this article. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So apparently she is, let's see, uh, she was a white Jewish child living in Kansas City and assumed uh, assumed the, the, the role of, of a black person. I, guys, I can't make this stuff up. Anyway, I'm going to leave the story there. It's, it's worth reading. It's, uh, it's, it's a little lengthy, a little wordy, but, uh, my goodness gracious. Are we just, uh, people are so weird. Um, okay. So also in the news, Elon Musk, this guy shows up everywhere in the news. Elon Musk has unveiled his brain implant. Okay. So it's a, it's called a neural link and it has 1,028 neural connections or neural pathways or whatever you want to call it. And the way it works is you, uh, you know, make a small incision in the, in the, the back of your head and yeah, well, not you personally, I imagine somebody has got a really sharp knife does. Um, and you gently peel back the skin and then you remove a quarter size piece of a uh, bone. Yeah. And then you expose the brain matter and then you very gently, very, very gently push the probes into the, 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 the gray matter. Very gently. Did I mention very gently as they make their connections inside, and then you very carefully put this quarter-sized little thing, little rectifier on top. It's got a, it uses a, um, it's got a battery in it, but it uses inductive. Uh, that's where you have, you remember? So okay, so inductive. So um, you have a coil of wire, and you have another coil of wire, and if you put electricity in one, and you have to use a couple metal plates as a pass through. But anyway, you if you put an electrical current in the one, the other one will induct an electrical current. As a matter of fact, that's how you get motors to work. They pass an electrical motor, uh, pass a uh, magnetic field, and they'll induce electricity or and vice versa. You can get electricity out of magnets. Anyway, so that's what you do. So you, you, you use the coil that's in there to charge the battery with an inductive coil on the outside of your head, because otherwise you have to have the cable running the whole time. You look like data. Um, so, uh, yeah, so he's, he's built this thing 
and he implanted it in. Uh, he had some samples. He had like a, a a regular pig. He had a pig that had it, and they took it out. And then he's got a pig that has one running. And then they finally got the pig in. They turned it on, and here's what you heard. <laughs> I'm thinking, all right, great. So it's one little teeny tiny little region of the brain picking up. And people are blasting him. They're basically saying, look, we've had this technology for like 15 years now. There's nothing new going on. The only new thing is he got it down to a really teeny tiny little nodule. But I, I get it. He he was he was very vague about how it all works. He doesn't seem to fully understand himself. I think what he's looking to do, he's trying to gain some excitement behind it. Like, hey, man, what if we could go into the brain and what if we could capture all that information and download it and stick it on a hard drive? And then, you know, 15 years down the road, you know, when your body falls apart, you can just grab the hard drive and reload it back up or, or just live in a hard drive, you know? And I think that's what he's going for. He's trying to get people to get, you know, more interested in it. And, um, yeah, it's just it's just creeping people out a little bit here. Uh, we need to let me put this right here. Hold on. Bear with me. Remember, guys, I'm alone here. I'm alone. So be nice to me. OK. All right. I put a little breaker here. To remind me uh, because now it is time for me to press this button up here. Where to go? 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 Oh, there it is. This is a thank. Thank you, Ted, for helping me with this one. But let's press this button there. There we go. The Eat It song by Weird Al Yankovic. There we go. All right. So we are going to talk a little bit about why we are, that's right, the fattest nation in the world. Okay. So what do you think of when you think of breakfast? Do you think of something delicious? Do you think of maybe, oh, some oatmeal? I had an egg with a with an English muffin this morning. Nope. How about a Reese's breakfast cake? Mm, mm, mm. That's right. Chocolatey cake on one top side, peanut buttery cake on the bottom, dipped in a sh thick, chocolatey, gooey, gumpy. And they're recommending this for breakfast. So I can't make this stuff up. So that's that's one of the reasons. Also, Kraft now has specifically put on the outside of all of their mac and cheese boxes that it is also available for breakfast. That's right. Kraft is recommending that every morning you start your day with a big, huge bowl of mac and cheese. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, so, and uh, on top of everything else, Arby's has now introduced two extra sandwiches. It's a prime rib and a cheese steak. So if, you know, you just can't get enough of everything else in the world, Arby's got you covered as well. Burger King, Burger King is now making it even faster for you to get fed. They are going to suspend their kitchens with indoors. And what you do is you, you're in your car and they've got like these bays and they're like three on this side, three on this side. And uh, I don't know, the food gets delivered like through, I don't know, vacuum cleaners or something. But anyway, that, that's their concept. It's going to be uh, uh, just the main kitchen in the center and three, you know, three arms on one side, three arms on the other. And food, 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 fast, 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 food, 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 fast, fast, fast. So, yeah, that's going to be what's going on there. There was a couple of things. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, hold on. We're getting there. Why'd that get mixed in there? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently Mountain Dew is going to be introducing and making permanent gingerbread holiday soda. Yeah, can't get, can't get enough of that one. That'll be pretty good there. Uh, Pillsbury announces Mean Girls inspired toaster strudels with pink ice cream icing at which you can chuck at your friends, I guess, afterwards. Pillsbury has also announced that you can now eat their cookie dough raw. Because, <laughs> you know, if you can't get it fast enough uh, uh, onto the plate and wait 15 minutes and have it be a cookie, yep, go ahead, eat it raw. They figured out they're going to cook the eggs ahead of time and cook the flour ahead of time. So just grab that jar. and uh, uh, Kellogg introduces the uh, three sweet waffle flavors. They've got birthday cake, unicorn, 
and mermaid. I have no idea what the mermaid one tastes like. It's pretty freaking me out here a little bit. Uh, Domino's has announced the new what? New chicken taco and cheeseburger pizza. There you go. Have a little bit of that one. And finally, the most <laughs> reason we are the fast nation world is uh, we have Dunkin' Donuts has introduced the uh, the Charlie Charlie Diamelo. Mm -hmm. There you go. Drink. It is. It. You think you think the lemonade was high at Chick Fil A? <whistles> nope. This thing is a sugar rush. Absolute sugar. Pure sugar. And that, my dear friends, is why we are the fattest nation in the world. All right. Thanks, Weird Al. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Haven't heard from you in a while. You can always reach out to us as well. That's a goodly thing. All right. A couple of more things I want to talk about, if I can get my little computer to behave itself here. Oh, my gosh. All those terrible sugary drinks. And, of course, all the Halloween candy is out on the, on the shelves right now. You can get into some of that if you want, which I think is crazy as all get out um hey some good news i have some good oh this i want to talk about this as well some good news i want to talk about yay apparently scientists have now developed a new compound that kills both types of antibiotic resistant super bugs as you know i'm a big advocate of not taking antibiotics unless you need to take antibiotics so if you have a cold and you feel like garbage don't go to the doctor and browbeat them to get you antibiotics that's only if you have a need for antibiotics okay if you have a viral infection it's not going to cure the viral infection that would be like a cold or a flu or something like that it's only going to get rid of a bacterial infection, okay, like staph. Yeah, you got staph? <laughs> Please take these antibiotics. But it's getting to the point where people have to, like, get two, three, four, six different types of antibiotics just to get rid of that staph infection. And there are some superbugs that are now resistant. And so it's kind of like the cockroach assembly thing here where I, we talked about this um, in the past. If you um, if you have something that kills like 99.999% of all the cockroaches, that means 0.001% of them live. And then they breed. And then they have children. And their children's children, children have children. And that means that those last few cockroaches are super cockroaches. And you could spray them all day long and 100% of them will live. Same thing with the antibiotics. You use it for everything under the sun, colds, sniffles, runny nose, whatever it is. And now you've gotten rid of, you've, you've killed off all the weak bacteria and all the strong bacteria move on. And this is a lot like when you're making uh, making bread with yeast or like what I do when I'm making beer with yeast, the trick is to introduce as much of the, the good yeast into your batch as you can. That way if the bad stuff doesn't have a chance to take over. Okay. Now when you kill off everybody and the only one that's left is the nasty bug, that's where we have this problem. So anyway, this is pretty cool. They've got the, uh, Two, uh, two, uh, yeah, a couple compounds that kills the new antibiotic resistant bugs. So I'm happy about that. Scientists, I have not read this. Um, I did see it on the on the on the macro level. There is a. It's. It, I'll, I'll read the stories here, but um, <laughs> it is an anti gravity buoyant demonstration with two boats levitating in a liquid so i will leave that story how much time do we have here we have about six minutes shoot um it is a it is a it is a viscous uh viscous fluid like glycerin and it was able to be 
oozed out of the chamber. It is completely levitated. So I don't know. Is it worth looking at? It's an interesting story. I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, it's sitting in a cushion of air and there, now there's all this talk about, you know, whether or not, you know, physics is broken or whether or not we've, we've delved into something we shouldn't be talking about with anti-gravity, yada, yada, yada. No, look, this is, this is how we learn. We're going to learn about stuff that we had no idea existed. And this is how we're going to move on and move on and be a better people and a better nation. And dun, 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 dun. All right, I'll get off that little campster now. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, this is fun. So apparently we have made contact with Andromeda. And apparently it's it's a big it's a big story, but apparently it's not a big story. Hubble um notice that like the the uh outer at, outer atmosphere, outer regions, if you will, have made contact with our galaxy and people are kind of think that's kind of cool, but I don't know, I'll leave that story there. Um America Express is working with deep fakes. I know we talked about deep fakes earlier in the show, but evidently they're using the same technology as algorithms for credit fraud so they can uh, recognize when things are being fraudulently used and using the artificial intelligence that's used for the deep fake for keeping track of that as well. So I thought that was an interesting thing to do. So I just thought I'd share that. I'm going to leave that story in the comment there for give you guys a little more time to read on that one. And oh, Really, Freddy? That's quick. All right. Anyway, that's going to be our hour. That is the Slade and Mason Show. Um, I am Dan Mason. JD will be here next week. And Hi, I'm JD Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this is the Slade and Mason Show. There we go. There we go. That's the official uh, the official send-off. Uh, you guys, be safe. Be nine. Be ten with iron. Have a great week. And we'll see you, God willing, next Sunday, 10 a.m. Shh. Arr. <laughs> Bye, everybody. All right, team, you know the drill. So if you're enjoying the Slade and Mason show and you want to see more episodes, make sure you hit the subscribe button down yonder and hit the bell. You got to do both. Um, something bad will happen. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.